ہی <تصفيق> I greet all of you with the greetings of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Meaning may the peace, mercy and the blessings of Allah the Most High be upon all of you. In the last session, we have mentioned about some of the causes of misconception as well as we dealt with some of the misconceptions and clarified it. With an objective that those people who are ignorant about Islam may understand and gain the knowledge also to refute those arrogant people who prevent themselves from the truth we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide all of us in this session we shall deal with some of the misconceptions again with an objective that the people of the world may look at it on the basis of proof on the basis of honesty and truthfulness among the misconceptions that the people have is also they say that is it not true is it not true that Muhammad peace be upon him he authored the Quran let the Quran speak for itself let the Quran speaks and answers this question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Ar-Rahman Surah number 55 ayat number 1 and 2 Ar-Rahman Allam al-Quran. It is Ar-Rahman, the most gracious God who has taught the Quran. Name of the book, the glorious Quran. And the source of revelation, God Almighty, Ar-Rahman, the most gracious himself, not Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Also when we read in Surah Najm, Surah number 53, Ayat number 3 and 4, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا يَنْتِقُوا أَنِ الْحَوَى إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا he does not speak anything from himself except what we have revealed to him. So whatever Muhammad has mentioned in the Quran, it is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not the kalam of Rasulullah In fact, if we read the glorious Quran, we know that Muhammad he was an unlettered prophet. He didn't know how to read and write. So how can a person who didn't know how to read and write would compile and write such a book of eloquence, a book of magnanimity, a book of miracle, a book which talks about the stories of the past so accurately, a book which talks about the future events so peculiarly, a book which is the full guidance for the humanity. How can an unlettered prophet by himself write all this in this book it falls back on the ground who say that Muhammad peace be upon him is the author of the book and now for the sake of argument for the sake of discussion if he say that yes he authored this book why would a person who authored the book keep himself away keep denying that he did not write the book but the book that was given is from God why will the person say that I am not the author but the one who sent me is the author of the Quran why would a person deny his authorship it is illogical it is irrational and unreasonable to say that the person he he, he authored the book and he keeps away himself the proof that Muhammad Sallam keep on repeating in the Quran sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that this is not 
from me it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this proof this claim that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down this message this Quran is mentioned in several places in the Quran it is mentioned in Surah An'am Surah number 6 ayat number 19 in Surah Yusuf Surah number 12 ayat number 1 to 3 in Surah Yaseen Surah number 36 ayat number 1 to 3 in Surah Zumar Surah number 39 ayat number 41 in Surah Ibrahim Surah number 14 ayat number 1 in Surah Ibrahim Surah number 14 ayat number 52 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this Quran is from him it is not the book it is not the book of Muhammad Islam he did not author the Quran so we see if we refer back this question back to the Quran we will get the answer those who read the Quran with honesty they will say they will understand and they will realize that Muhammad Islam he did not author the book but the book was revealed unto him among the misconceptions about Muhammad Islam is also that Na'udhu Billah he was a war monger people think that he was some people they think that he was a war monger he was always fighting when we see in reality who is a war monger we know that those people who does the crime who does wars with no justice with no limits with no motive but to capture the lands and to capture the wealth of that land we know and we will conclude that these people who say and who allege that Muhammad Islam is the war monger they will again fall back on the ground because there is not a single war that Muhammad fought which is for himself or which is unjust which is not to establish peace which is not in the limits of the limits set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we find all the wars that Muhammad fought it is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we know that all the wars that Muhammad fought it was with peace and justice we know that those wars had limits had conditions and limits to a level where Muhammad Islam he prohibited he prohibited his army his army that during the war in the battlefield they should not kill the children the women the sick and old people the religious people of other men who are not involved in war he prohibited his Muslim army the soldiers not to destroy the fields not to spoil the wells not to kill the children not to kill the animals these are the teachings of Muhammad peace be upon him who could dare say that Muhammad system is a warmonger now Billah. anyone who study his life in an honest way would say that he was the truthful warrior he was the warrior with justice he was the warrior to establish peace and tranquility on the face of the earth among the misconceptions about Muhammad sallallahu was also an allegation upon his own life Muhammad sallallahu being alleged by the people they say why did Muhammad peace be upon him he married so many marriages well to answer this Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam he married the first time when he was 25 years old and he married to a woman who was doubly double widowed and 40 years old which means 15 years older than him psychologists they say that the age of 25 and around is is the most peak of the youth why would Muhammad Islam, if Na'udhu Billah, if he's a womanizer, why would at this peak of youth, why would he marry the woman who is 15 years old? This fact itself is enough to disprove that he was a womanizer. Na'udhu Billah. Another thing, he did not marry till the death of Khatija radiallahu anha. He married after five years of the death of Khatija radiallahu anha and he married again to a widow. He married again to a widow who was Sauda radiallahu anha, who was again five years older 
than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at that time. The third marriage that Muhammad sallallahu performed was with Aisha radiallahu anha. And Aisha radiallahu anha, this marriage was organized, was planned again by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was a divine marriage. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he married her and he married other women based on certain wisdoms, based on certain principles. None of the marriage of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was out of lust, na'uzubillah. He was the man of truthfulness. He was the most pious man. He was the man of nobility. He was the man of integrity. He was the man of dignity. He did not marry out of lust. He married so many marriages in order sometimes to settle two tribes together so that love and affection can come. He married to bring people closer to Islam. He married for these things, these wisdoms, for these principles. He was not at all a womanizer. As we said, if he was, then he would never, he would never marry for the first time on, at the age of 25 with a woman who was 40 years old. We know the life of Muhammad like a mirror, like a mirror. It's all transparent. It is the need of a person to study, analyze and understand and they will be exposed to the truth, to the reality. And among the misconceptions that the people have is also that he married to Aisha radiallahu anha who was too young, who was just nine years old. Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, he married to Aisha radiallahu anha at the age of six and he consummated this marriage at the age of nine. Now why did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam married Aisha radiallahu anha? As we said, the first and foremost thing is it is a divine marriage. It is a divine marriage. It is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Secondly, why should he marry? The people of that time, the Arabs of that time, they were the enemies of Rasulullah and they themselves did not allegate or did not ask this question at that time to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What does it reflect? What does it reflect? It reflects that it was common among them. It was a common practice to marry even the young. The most important thing is she was, she also, she also reached the age of puberty at the time when Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam consummated her. So why? Why this hue and cry? Aisha radiallahu anha throughout the life with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and after the demise of Rasulullah alayhi wa sallam, she was never ever unhappy, ungrateful to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In fact, she was happy, comfortable, and very peaceful with Muhammad, peace be upon him. So if she didn't have any problem, why the others have the problem? Moreover, the wisdom in marrying Aisha radiallahu anha is also that we get maximum number of ahadith of teachings from Aisha radiallahu anha. This is again one of the wisdoms that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had in marrying Muhammad Sallam with Aisha radiallahu anha. So my dear brothers and sisters, at the outset, again I would like to remind all of you that if you have any misconceptions, any questions, go back to the right sources avail the information and accept it with complete honesty and inshallah you wouldn't have any misconception or allegation with regards to Muhammad peace be upon him. We end this episode with an ayah with which I began my talk from Surah Nahal Surah number 16 ayah number 125 in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Udu'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmah wal mawidhatil hasana wa jadil humbilati hi ahsan. Invite all the people to the way of your Lord with wisdom and beautiful preachings and argue with them, discuss with them in the ways that are best and most gracious. Wa akhiru dawana and ilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Subhanallah walhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah Subhanallah walhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah Subhanallah walhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah 
Every time when I'm awake, all things that I see, I know it's hard to believe, but it's from the Almighty. When the leaves fall from the tree, every plant that grows on land, when the waves flow in the sea, it's by His 